Good afternoon and welcome to Pratt Chat. This is our December edition, but November edition of Pratt Chat. And I am Sharon Farrell, President of the Public Relations Association of Trinidad and Tobago. In our Pratt Chat this afternoon, we are meeting and speaking with Senator the Honorable Larry Hassel Bacchus, as well as Vice President of Flow. Mrs. Simone Sugar, um, both of whom are going to be sitting here with us as we discuss the importance of communications as we look at the issue of digital transformation. So let me give you a little insight in terms of our speakers. Senator the Honorable Larry, and I keep calling him Hassel Larry Bacchus, was appointed as Minister of Digital Transformation on July 12th, 2021 after serving as Minister in the Ministry of Public Administration and Digital Transformation from August 19, 2020. A holder of an ASS in Electronics Engineering Technology from the University of the District of Columbia, Washington, DC. Uh, Mr. Bacchus has spent close to 30 plus years at the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, he brings with him a wealth of experience into the area of digital tr transformation and is a very passionate about the area of digital transformation. So I would really like to welcome Mr. Bacchus to our to, uh, talk this afternoon. Along with Senator Bacchus, we do have Vice President of Flow, a very charming lady, Mrs. Simone Martin Sugar. Uh, who was appointed the Vice President of Flow, Trinidad Tobago, in May 2021. Mrs. Shulga has 15 years of experience in, in the telecommunication industry. She has worked across the Caribbean, holding senior management positions in Trinidad and Tobago, the Cayman Islands, and the Southern Caribbean. After pursuing an MBN and MSc in international development, business development, and consultancy in, in Germany and France, Respectively, she returned to the Caribbean in 2014 and began her tenure at CNW as VP of Mobile Operations for the, Biz, for the Bahamas telecommunications industry. So we do have a fantastic panel with us. And I really, um, really want to thank you all for being here, um, agreeing to be part of this chat. And I really look forward to a really engaging and exciting conversation this afternoon on Pratt Chat. So before we get in, I really want to ask Minister Bacchus, uh, Senator Bacchus, you know, kind of give us a little insight in terms of the whole issue of digital transformation and where we are as a Trinidad and Tobago as we are loading a digital Trinidad and Tobago. Senator Bacchus. Uh, Sharon, thank you. And uh, really a good evening to, to the entire audience. And um, uh, Simone, I, I know you very well. Sharon, uh, we worked together for some time. And uh, I really want to thank the, uh, the Public Relations Association of Trinidad and Tobago for the opportunity uh, to address your audience and, and to, to share some of what we were trying to do in terms of digital transformation in Trinidad and Tobago. Just to say that it's not new. Uh, this journey is something that we started a long time ago. Uh, my checks go back all the way to 2003. Uh, but we are focused on three main areas of doing that. And it will be the digital economy, it will be a digital society, and of course, digital government. And we will get into a number of things where that is concerned. And of course, the critical and important role of communications uh, as we do that. Please permit me as well to, uh, as, and I am surrounded by women, just to you know, acknowledge uh, today as the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, that abhorrent thing that is happening even within our society here in Trinidad and Tobago. I apologize for not having anything orange, but I stand fully in, in line with uh, elimination of anything of that type. So thanks very much and looking forward to having a good conversation. Thank you very much, Minister Bacchus. Uh, um, I would like to invite Ms. Stroker, and I'm, I hope I'm really pronouncing your, your last name correctly, um, you know, just to share with us in terms of flow and the whole issue of digital transformation. Sure. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks again for the invitation. Honorable Minister, it's always a pleasure to share the stage with you. I mean, I think we're a bunch of like-minded individuals here all pursuing the same thing while be it, you know, we're playing different roles. 
So while the minister has been tasked with actually driving this portfolio of, you know, digitization with Trinidad and Tobago, um, as one of the bigger entities and operators, we are, you know, a private sector, uh, an enabler, right, of making that digital transformation happen. And it won't be possible without the support of private um, enterprise such as cable and wireless and flow. So it's our absolute pleasure to, you know, um, play an integral role and an active an active one as well in in getting you know Trinidad on, on the front foot right of this very now um overly digital environment that we're finding ourselves thrust into imagine it had to take a pandemic for us to realize that you know we need to evolve faster than the speed of light so um everything happens for a reason and absolutely Flo is committed to making sure that whether that access be uh delivered through um the actual access and connectivity itself through the technology also you know hardware i mean we would have just concluded our mission week where we would have gone about donating um hybrid learning systems to a number of secondary schools across trinidad and tobago and it's because again um acknowledging an opportunity for us to play a part especially as it comes to online education and, and learning because we know if one thing is for sure um the students are the ones that are actually suffering the most um, right now, with schools not being open, face-to-face -face learning being a challenge, and of course, the digital divide is something that we can't we can't deny exists. So, you know, the role of the communications uh, professionals uh, helping us get that story across there is very important, and I'm really looking forward to, to tonight's discussion. Thank you so much, Simone, and and so am I. So let's talk communications. Let's look at at digital transformation and really that role of the communication professional in disseminating the information in getting that message across in that it's your storytelling you know let's get that and let's start that conversation i i know a lot of people when we speak to digital transformation we look at the technology side of it the the, the, the hardware the computers the the all of that but there's that soft side to the to digital transformation the customers the clients, the persons who have to actually engage um, in the use of new technology. So I want to get that in terms of the discussion going. So let me let me go into Minister. Minister, you know, what's your view? What how, how do you see this? Well, it's 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 a good place to start. I know when when we started to set up the ministry, one of the things that we came up with is our view of what. Uh, digital transformation is. And we, we created and coined our own phrase. It's actually uh, all over almost all the literature and things that you'll find about the ministry. And what we say it is, and you won't find this in Google, I think we created this, is that what we're trying to do as far as the transformation is concerned is create a new way, and, and, I, and I can always get into the pieces of this, but a new way uh, for the end-to-end, -end, and again, it's key, end-to-end, uh, delivery and consumption of goods and services uh, by customers using appropriate digital technology. And I'm sure Simone understands the technology side of it and all the others. But when you, if you take that, that particular slogan and you break it up into pieces, you'll start to understand that it, it's not just about the technology. There are key components to this. And the comms actually is absolutely critical in terms of how we're able to achieve it. If we don't uh, build the correct communications plans, if we don't target the right audiences, if we don't send the right messages to the places that they need to go, we're going to find ourselves in a situation where uh, all that we do, even if we do it to the best of our ability, will not uh, redound and give us the benefits that we're looking for. So, so those softer skills are absolutely key and important in, in our ability to do what we're doing. Across the spectrum of what I spoke about before, digital society, digital economy, digital government, you will understand that for us to be able to do that, we really have to affect three things, people, process, and systems. Uh, the people part, you, you, you get, you know, that's absolutely key. The process part is how we're going to be able to make the necessary changes to influence things into our digital space. And of course, the systems will include not just the technology, but also the legislation, all of those other pieces that go along with it. So, you know, in a nutshell, that's what we're trying to do. And, and we're not going to be able as a ministry or even as a government to do this independently. We must work and establish partners uh, to do that. The, you know, 
Pratt is a, is a really good example of that. If, if we are able to leverage the connections and the things that you have in our ability to, in, in our endeavor to get what we have to get out, I'm absolutely sure we will do a lot better than that. I'm sure Simone has some, some, some thoughts on it as well. And again, we can develop it further if you want to. Of course, and Simone, I'm actually coming to you because I know Minister provided us with a very nice jump off point here. And especially as we talk to things like partnership, um, so, you know, I'm, I'm coming to you, you know, let's, let, let's broaden the discussion. Yeah, sure. I mean, again, right. It's, it's the communications professional has such a unique role right now. I mean, it's, it's strategic, right. In, in essence, because you are basically now taking all these touch points in their very rawest of forms and now needing to distill it into a, a nice customized, understandable form for, for, every and any audience otherwise what we're doing is basically an exercise in futility i mean if you think about technology on its own before we talked about text and specs and and the average man on the street probably is a bit intimidated by talking about you know g pawn and and g this and for them it's 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 a little cerebral and very hard for them to grasp what those technology you know technology based ideas are about so you know, associations like Pratt, the onus is on them to now take that and flip it into consumer language, into what customers understand. So it's all about how does this benefit me? Why do I need to jump on this digital train, right? What 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 inherent benefits or positives or what, again, for the customer, how does this relate to my life, right? And it's ensuring that the common person sits around the table to take that very cerebral idea, if I were to put it into context, if we look at our products and promotions, we can go out there and talk about speed. We launch 100, they launch 200, then somebody else launched 400. At the end of the day, the customer's like, listen, I have $200, I have four children at home, I need a connection that's going to be able to allow them to do their online schooling. If it is that, you know, for my, my relaxation purposes, I wanna stream YouTube, it, it's getting the customers to understand what that means in their language. And I think the communications professional's responsibility now is, more, is so important and so critical to help us make that transition from what we're trying to do from, you know, the hard IQ technology, technology based stuff into getting it into, you know, something that the layman can understand because, you know, they're the ones that we need to take along this journey with us, right? So it's about making sure that in our dialogue and in our conversations that the essence of the message, the essence of what we're trying to do and what we're trying to provide is not lost on anyone, right? It's not lost on on, on any of the members of public regardless of social standing or education. They understand the importance of, you know, as the minister said, a digital economy. They understand the importance of, you know, having that identity online and et cetera. They understand what it is we're trying to do, the conveniences that it provides. And again, it's a partnership, making sure that the strategy and the direction is set at a national level. And then you have your private enterprise now aligning themselves to galvanize efforts there. And then having, you know, associations such as Pratt distilling that message regardless of how you decide to tell that story and whatever channels you choose because the more people that are aware of what we're trying to do the easier this evolution for the country will be thanks simone actually i i, I agree with you wholeheartedly i i do believe that the associations like pratt and fact public relations professional do have a major role to play in the whole dissemination of information as we look at digital transformation so i do take that and minister you know as you mentioned the, the three-part approach of people, processes, and, and uh, pre people, process, and strategy? Systems. It's systems. There we yeah. go. So yeah. people, process, and systems. And I wanted us to get in a little bit because, you know, you talk about, you know, that coin that, 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 that the ministry would have coined in terms of the definition for digital transformation and it being uh, looking at a new way. And I, I really want to look at that because I want us to spend a little time in terms of getting into that. This new way, because this digital transformation has been, it's not, it's not new. You know, it's not a new thing. It's just now looking at a new way 
in which we are going to try to get that engagement going. And as a communicator, I think that is something that we really need to understand. That new way in terms of how we are going to go about that. So, I mean, I'm, I just want to get us into that kind of conversation. Yeah, sure. Um, when, when we talk, and, and if you take the, like I said, I can, I can disaggregate that, that slogan for you. But the new way is actually a key part of it. A new way really represents exactly that a new way of doing things, a new way of thinking, a new way of communicating, a new way of achieving the things that you want because you're not going to be able to accomplish the things that you want to do in this century using techniques and methods that you use in the old one. I mean, you just take Project project Work for a really good example, the waterfall methods that we used in the past, the type of, 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 of linear type thinking that we had in the past is not going to work. You have to move to the more agile type ways and methodologies of doing things. And you have to have, uh, you know, a constant change and, and, and thinking of, of innovation and ways to do it. And that extends across all, all the divides and, and comms is no different. Uh, I'll touch on a few other parts of, of that slogan, a new way. And we're talking about end-to-end -end services. End-to-end -end services is something, and again, so I'm going to tell you a lot more about this in, in the industry in which it works, the industry in which I came from as well. The, the idea behind it is that you're not doing piecemeal things for, for what, again, lower down what we call the customers. What we're talking about in this case, when we talk about end-to-end -end services, uh, if, if you want to interact, and let's just use the state as the example, you want to get a service or utilize a service that the state provides. Uh, the way this is supposed to work is that if we're working in a truly digital environment, the entire transaction should be able to be done in a remote or digital transfer using ICT as the way to do it. Uh, what we do have now are some, some stop and start pieces and some pieces that are not entirely end to end. So you probably can make an appointment uh, using digital technology, but when you get to the office, you still have to make up paper forms, et cetera. And then to achieve the service, you still have to go somewhere else to pay, et cetera. When we talk about end to end services, we're talking about doing that from beginning to end, utilizing the platforms that we're using now just for me to speak to you. Another key part of, of that conversation is customer. And I think I, I, I always like to explain this because people utilize, when we say customer, people always think about the people who are consuming services. It, it's the, those are just one part of the equation. Let's, let's use, again, services that are provided by the state. Well, the customers will only benefit from the changes in, in terms of the culture and, and all of the technology that we're putting in if uh, the people who are providing those services also have the same types of accommodation. So when we talk about customers in this slogan, we're not just talking about the people who consume services, but also the people that provide them. That is that is absolutely key in the way that works. So in the case of, of, of the state sector, you're not just talking about citizens accessing services, but the public officers who provide them as well. In the education sector, it's not just students, but the educators who do it as well. And the last piece to that is, of course, using appropriate digital technology. Appropriate digital technology is really that. There are a number of solutions that have been built, created, and put forward for consumption that are not fit for purpose, not right for people, and people ignore them. They, they reject them and do things associated with that. So the idea is, yes, you want to digitalize. Yes, you want to do things correctly. But you have to do things that are specific and that are fit for purpose. And of course, that they leave no one behind. That's another thing that can happen with you, which is why partnerships are so important. You go ahead and you go along this massive digitalization plan, you do all the transformation, and then you've alienated a significant amount of your population. A, a really easy example of that would be if we, as we've been doing uh, fairly recently, moving a lot online payments, but using online payments based only on people who have bank accounts and cards. What about the unbanked? What about the underbanked and so on? So you have to cater for all of those things as we embark upon this journey. And again, the partnerships that we have, it is not that the Ministry of Digital Transformation is trying to do it on its own. It's not that the government is trying to do it on its own. We have to partner with as many people as we can to get this done because there's lots of talent here. Lastly, I want to also include the fact that we're trying to do this. I, I The slogan, again, I have for this is for Trinidad and Tobago, by Trinidad and Tobago. The building of the appropriate ecosystems that give uh, all young entrepreneurs or young inventors or young smart people the ability to, to take advantage of those ecosystems and develop the things that they want to create the apps that probably will change Trinidad and Tobago for a long time and some parts of the world. 
you want to be able to have that and then have them have the ability to, to work with uh, the private sector, work with international agencies and so on to be able to accomplish that. So, so that is, if, if I wanted to put it that way, that is a big part of, of, of what we're trying to do and accomplish under the Digital Transformation Program. Thank you, Minister. And, and you know, I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm, I'm going here in terms of where you are going with this and I, and I kind of like it. Um, I got a, a question that asks, what is the importance of a digital economy? You know, what is the importance of that? And I, I'm throwing it out to the panel. What is the importance of a digital economy? And, and particularly now in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago. Simone, you want to take it? Uh, Simone, you want to take it? Or you want me yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, again, it's it's about almost future proofing um, your society, right? So, a digital economy for us, it's about getting those, as, as Senator Bacchus would have said, uh, processes, people, those things in place to make sure that we're able to now create an economy that is robust enough to take us into the future. Right. So it's about creating, creating uh, institutions, creating programs that will allow us to now um, basically evolve exactly what we've been doing before. So, I mean, I think it's, 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 it's a natural step in our evolution that we need to, to get there. But as the minister would have alluded to, I think we, we still have to acknowledge that there are groups that are not there yet, right? We, we still are very much a heavy, heavily cash-based economy. You have the unbanked, the underbanked, et cetera. But for us to now put things in place that will allow us to, to move forward and show that we are evolving the way that we operate and we, the way that we think, I think it's, you know, it's, only, it's only natural and it makes complete sense for us to now start building towards that. Senator, anything to add? Yeah, sure. Um... So, so we have to look at this from, from, from multiple aspects of it. The, the, uh, the Minister of Finance, Honorable Colin Limbert, would have indicated in his, his, his budget presentation that um, part of what we're trying to do is to grow the contribution of the digital sector to GDP from 4 to 8%. Uh, that, that represents a is a significant number, but even in conversations that I was having fairly recently with uh, a number of international agencies, they're saying that could easily be on the very conservative side if we do what we need to do and, and develop it, not just here, but if we include the region as a whole. I think the regional aspect of what we're trying to do with in terms of uh, the economies uh, is really, really important. The other thing about this, of course, is that Trinidad is a, is a really sought after destination for a number of things, apart from the, the significant human resource that we have here, that, you know, a lot of international agencies already are taking advantage of. Uh, and, and, you know, they love our accents, they love the number of things they love about us, apart from the fact that we're just genuinely creative. Uh, we have, we're blessed with uh, significant natural resources that attracts uh, other types of industries at a mega scale. The same way we, we, we pioneered uh, natural gas uh, early on in, in development of Trinidad and Tobago. It's the same way in which we can uh, pioneer significant ICT things uh, here. There are a number of uh, people knocking at the door as well, for example, for the creation of mega data centers in Trinidad and Tobago, taking advantage, of course, the fact that we have natural gas and other things. We have to work through that type of, of, of economic change as well as we seek to diversify what we're doing. Yes, some of it is still based on, on carbonized things for now, carbon, carbon things, but at the same time, we also have all these massive programs going on within the Ministry of Energy for transformation to solar, uh, hydrogen, et cetera, et cetera. So but you start to combine that with, with what is available and what is, what is, what is possible uh, without even taking into consideration the human resource aspect of it and the potential for significant change and growth in the digital e, uh, economy part is, is 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 actually really 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 rosy. I think it's something that we look we, as a country we should look forward to with uh, with with you know with pride. I think it's achievable. Well, thanks, Minister. Actually, we have a question here, and uh, yeah, you as you mentioned the issue of resources and particularly human resources. Um, I have a question from from. Uh, Facebook that speaks or is asking, you know, are state employed communication specialists equipped with the necessary resources and staffing um, to help increase awareness uh, on the government trust with, in terms of digital transformation? 
Uh, so, yeah. Um, so remember, one of the things I, I, I keep stressing is that this is not uh, this type of cultural and significant transformation is not going to be achieved by the state in in in, unis, in, in its in its own self. We have to partner with uh, pretty much everyone who is, is is reasonable and who can help in in, in this endeavor. Uh, obviously, the equipment and the equipping of of communication specialists is important. But at the same time, what medium are you going to use? How do you target the right audience? What demographic are you putting with what message? How where do you know to put what? What happens when we talk about increasing the digital literacy of our society? Do we as the ministry go out and build all of these places to make this happen? We are engaged in a number of initiatives to help uh, with, with that in a number of ways. Our access centers is a really good example of that. They really highly utilize, they, they provide not just areas where people can go and utilize or bring their own devices and utilize uh, you know, broadband services. But more than that, they, they go, these, are, these are also places where you can go with nothing. You don't have a device, you don't have, you don't know how to do anything. You simply have a question or a, a desire to do something. And there's training available there. There is there equipment available there, the computers there, tablets, printers, scanners, all the pieces, as well as trained staff from the local areas who will assist you. So when we talk about, this is a holistic view. It's not just about equipping the state machinery to do this. This is using everyone. The, the example I used most recently is, is Alta. I mean, the adult literacy, you know, training. They, these these people have. Think about this. Think about how how would people with with literacy challenges, uh, particularly the people who Alta work with, how would they have coped in this pandemic? How would they have received the kind of assistance that they would have gotten? And so, and what happened? We partnered with Alta as the ministry, and they are using you know, areas and facilities that we have, using their own software, using their own people. Uh, to help to do that and all they're doing is partnering with the, the the state in this case this ministry to do that it's the same across the board ministry of education ministry of social services you name it that is the way it's going to go so yes we have a responsibility to train and equip uh, the staff that work within the state and machinery but we also have an even larger commitment to the people by using all of the resources that are available within Trinidad and Tobago partnering Thanks, Minister. I, I think Simone Flo, and I, you can correct me here, that Flo itself is, has a lot of partnership is also going on there in terms of that training and that developmental aspect. You want to talk in terms of what is happening in terms of Flo? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, um, I would have mentioned in my opening that we would have just recently concluded our mission week. I mean, our CSR, our where our CSR strategy actually comes to life. And one of the pillars is on access. So in terms of transformation, we're looking at now that online learning, e-learning, it is now going to become part and parcel of the, you know, instructive process, right? I don't think we're going to go back to just being, you know, face to face anymore. There is absolutely going to be a bit of a hybrid approach to education moving forward. And as a corporate citizen, we felt it necessary for those those schools who don't necessarily have maybe an active past people's association with the access to funds to help provide, you know, technology to the schools. We took it upon ourselves to actually go go ahead and, and donate, you know, not only the hardware and the access, but also the software, the licenses, training for teachers and um, the teachers who are going to be the um you know, delivering the classroom training, training them, giving them equipment so that they can now create their, their learning plans, etc. So that's the way we, in our own way, are partnering, right, as Senator would have mentioned, to kind of get that transformation happen, specifically, specifically as it deals with education. Because again, acknowledging that this is very much um, not only a hot topic, but also it's probably one of the most important groups that we need to make sure aren't left behind, right? And when we talk about this, we also talk about uh, those fringe groups, for example, um, the school for the differently abled, you know, the school for people with, um, um, school for the deaf, for example, autistic, all of these, all of these special groups also need assistance. They also need to be brought on this digital journey. So for us, partnering with them, providing them with the access, not only just through connectivity, but also um, hardware and all the supporting tools. That's our way of, of making sure that 
they themselves are able to to survive as we you know go through this 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 process in our our evolution to become more of a digital type environment getting them familiar with the technology and the access so we have two questions and i'm going to read out both um Rodel Phillips Simmons, uh, digital transformation provides solutions and services. What are the priority areas being targeted? Who are the main beneficiaries? And Nigel Jordan sent in a, a, a question here. Considering transformation has to be truly holistic, has to be a truly holistic effort. What steps are being made on the legal front to support this effort with updating legislature? Um, so, Minister, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, sure. These, these are, and, and, and again, I, I, I thank your audience for the question. It, it shows the, the level of knowledge and, and uh, that, that the audience actually has because it's important. We can't digitally transform the entirety of Trinidad and Tobago at once. You have to target areas specifically, but the areas that are going to be targeted are the areas that have the most impact on the customers, and I defined customers earlier. Uh, it's quite simple. Uh, social services, uh, you know, so uh, social development, the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services is an easy one to start with. If you consider the type of interactions that the citizenry has to have with them and the, the reason why they have that type of interaction with them. Uh, if, if we had done fully automated and, and, and uh, fully transformed uh, the way in which people apply for grants, as an example, uh, we could have been significantly more efficient in the rollout that we have. We're working towards that. Uh, another significant and key place that we must target is uh, education. Significant impact to what happened. I mean, Simone mentioned it, and, and again, we're very thankful for the private sector uh, for the for the efforts that they've put in, not just in providing devices, et cetera, et cetera. But think about this. Uh, the Minister of Finance, Honorable Colin Burke, would have described and, and acclaimed now that uh, broadband is a public good, similar to water, similar to electricity. But think about the challenge that, that hit the, the services sector, the private services, who provide telecoms companies. When this, this change went from broadband being used as a social thing primarily to now becoming the way in which almost everything is done and transacted they themselves had to transform their model and so on. And so the interactions between the state and the, that particular sector also had to change and had to be prioritized to allow for the necessary uh, resources be made available that they need. In the wireless space, you're talking about uh, spectrum. In, in the fixed space, you're talking about concessions in some areas, as well as rights of way to do things that you have. So there, there are a number of things that had to happen in that space. So education was one, that was one. We, we also have to talk about uh, what is happening in healthcare. Healthcare is another major focus for what we have. Think about this, plan. I'm not gonna preempt what is going to be announced next week, but a promise was made uh, about the fact that we are going to have to be able to validate citizens and their vaccination status. That was promised by my uh, on the platform a few, a few weeks ago, and it's going to come to fruition. Uh, it's it's all about understanding what you need to do to address the, the things that you have. We have to be very responsive in, in on our approach to this transformation, which is unlike creating a, a dogma and you just march down that road. You have to be responsive. You have to be able to adjust. You have to be able to pivot and, and work on that. Uh, so th those are just a few. But obviously, finance is a significant one, the, the banking sector, the the, the actual way in which you interact with the state to pay things and so on, and all of that is going to have to change. And also the way in which the state interacts with you in terms of if you are receiving a benefit or something from the state, that also has to change uh, significantly. Um, the other question concerned, uh, what was it, the legal pieces? It, that it was, yes, the legal in terms yeah. of uh, looking at what efforts we mean in terms yeah. of updating the legislature. Yeah, so so I have a matrix in my office of stock up on the wall of of pretty well, it's not on the wall anymore. It's it's in I walk around with it everywhere. Of pretty much every piece of legislation that we have to adjust if we want to make this transformation whole. 
it is it is an extensive list some of it involves repealing of existing legislation and building i mean just think about the things that you're dealing with today and 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 it's it's a, when you think about it from a calm standpoint just look at how easy it is to create fear panic and anything else in the society by simply misuse of of or, or claiming something to be true that is false when you talk about it, the legislation that we have to have to be able to address those kinds of things really mired in, in, in legislation that didn't contemplate what was going to be happening today. There was no Facebook in that time. There was no WhatsApp in that time. So the Computer Misuse Act, as a good example, is, is not up, exactly apt for the kind of things that you want to deal with today. We've done significant changes to the Electronic Transactions Act. Uh, you're talking about data sovereignty, data classification. All like I said, it's a gamut of of legislation that we have to change. Fortunately, uh, the Ministry of the Attorney General and Legal Affairs has been extremely cooperative with us. Uh, we also have a number of international partners uh, who work within the region, outside the region, and everywhere else. I mean, the ITU, the Caribbean Development Bank, the World Bank, uh, the, the Communications Telecommunication Union, the CTO, you name it. Everyone has offered and continues to offer and assist us in, in terms of getting our legislative agenda, in terms of things that we need to do done, uh, offering advice, and of course, partnering and working with our own legislative people here to get it. That is a mammoth task. Some of the things that we have to change will include things that require touches to the Constitution, and you will understand the special majority is required to do that. So it's not a simple task, uh, but we have to work in lockstep. If we introduce technology and then try to implement it in ways that go ultra-virus to the constitution, you obviously will be shut down. So we have to we have to be very, very mindful of how we do that. But we are aware of it and we do have all of the pieces to do it. It's just a question of timing and of course, for to do things that require constitutional uh, and, and other types of special majorities will need cooperation from not just uh, the government, but the opposition, and in, in the case of the Senate, uh, the entire Senate, including the independent senator. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Minister. Um, and I want to get Simone into the discussion here. Uh, you know, Minister has you know really spoken in terms of a lot of the things that are going on in terms of the legislation, in terms of, of some of the capacity projects. And I'm trying to find out in terms of, you know, getting that partnership in terms of flow and what flow is bringing in as we look at the whole construct of digital transformation. I know you would have mentioned some parts of it earlier as we looked at things like the schools and in terms of some of the, the most corporate social responsibility elements that you all are doing. Um, but I'm trying to get into a little bit more in terms of where we are in terms of flow and where we are in terms of that partnership as flow government and to move that along. So if you know if we can get it, get you into the conversation. Sure. I mean, um, one of my first stakeholder meetings government wise was, of course, meeting with Honorable Senator Bacchus, because, again, uh, his whole office and portfolio, it's 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 100 percent aligned with the services that we provide. And as he said, the task that he has in front of him, it's a mammoth task and it's absolutely going to take the partnership and participation of of all agencies such as ourselves, all you know, private. This is this is not going to be a one and done it's going to constantly depend on you know forming new partnerships new understanding because we ourselves this whole journey is is uncharted territory if you will right so it's almost making sure that whatever we agree with whatever partnerships we put in place have some sort of the future proofed in a sense right and insofar as we could kind of predict well okay by a long shot we think maybe this might happen but let's prepare for it just in case so Flow, as as one of the major telecommunication you know providers, we have of course um, given our commitment to Honorable ba Honorable Minister Bacchus to say you know we are here right whatever role you think you need for us to play we are willing we've demonstrated from a CSR perspective that we are absolutely you know wholeheartedly about connecting um, Trinidad and Tobago be it through our B2B space, be it through our consumers. Um, and he also raised a very good point, right? Prior to the pandemic, the consumption of broadband services was social. It was something you did when you came home from work, right? And now it's practically a utility. I mean, for me as a mother of two young boys, you, you, you just thinking about not being connected. It's almost like sending your home back to the stone ages, right? How do you keep kids preoccupied now if you don't have Peppa Pig or Coco Melon streaming on a TV or, you know, the way we, the way we 
exist now, right? It's, it's so plugged in. It's so connected. It's extremely important. So as a provider of that connectivity, you know, we have to do better. And, and we acknowledge that in the past, we've probably not done our best. And we're now working hard. Again, at the end of the day, we are still a group of individuals trying our best, right? And technology, as I'm sure Mr. Bacchus could speak to, technology is it's something that can have you on your knees, right? Because sometimes things just don't work as they should. But we recognize that the role we play now is now at the top of that list where you'd put, you know, food and electricity and water. You know, connectivity is right up there. You might even have some people saying, I'll swap out food for, you know, uh, internet connection kind of, because that, that's where we are. And that's now the, the role that we need to play. And we're committed to making sure that we are, we're, we're up for that challenge and up to that task in, in what we've done, for example, you know, again, I didn't want to get into text and specs, but if it is your average household now has a TV that's constantly streaming to students who are doing, you know, virtual school, we know that you're not going to get a good enough experience if you don't have less than 100 megs, for example. So we made sure that that's our entry level package. So nobody is operating without that. We also know now you, this conference we're having now, it's not only download and need to be able to upload videos. So give them more speed to upload about. So again, it's understanding how are your customers interacting with your technologies and how do we make sure that we, we think about things they need before they get to that point, before they start to ask for it. So that's kind of where we are, we are trying to proactively play a role knowing that when you know the ministry identifies an opportunity for us that we're also there so it's almost making sure that we are touching as many people in this journey as we possibly can and then of course from the comms perspective distilling that message to all and sundry for them to understand this is the role that we're playing and this is ultimately the objective that we're trying to achieve but we're all on the same side here you know, and we all have the the same objective in mind. It's just, you know, with any with any game on any team, sometimes you play offense, sometimes you play defense. And, you know, you have the honorable minister here as the ultimate coach to kind of decide which players he's sending in when, etc. But again, we, we all want, you know, for our country to win. And as he said, we're very creative, solutions oriented, um, extremely intelligent and smart you know resources for any business and i definitely think we could also be a beacon for the wider caribbean and if not you know the world are, are from two story if you will thanks simone actually i was about to ask you what are those new products or, or, or suites of services digital services that flow is going to be bringing to the table because you know if you're talking digital um, transformation and you're looking at uh, moving ourselves forward, I'm, I'm, I'm looking now to see, you know, what would be the new things um, that flow is going to be coming. But since you tell me you're not going to be talking about, you know, going into that. <laughs> I say not Texas, but, but look, rest assured, what the past two years has taught us, it's almost like a science experiment, right? We've been in lockdown, we've been locked away, we've seen how the world has responded. And we know that change comes across and comes about in many different ways and it's not just from within the home but also globally so again as you know communications professionals looking at stories happening in the far east looking at stories happening in europe asia africa wherever to be able to say well if this is happening then you know we can proactively prepare to see this coming and then use that intel to kind of influence some of the decisions and some of the products that we 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 develop because we know eventually our people are also going to need it and we want to be able to deliver them, right? I mean, the one thing we've seen, we've spent, what, close to five, six months at home. What are some of the concerns now as parents? I want to know what my kid is watching. I don't want when I turn around and he's on the phone that he's looking at inappropriate material, you know? So, so looking at things like that, you start to say, okay, things like parental controls, things like being able to um, know what they're looking at, cut off their screen time, these are the types of, of, of products and services that put that very, you know, consumer focus, that consumer touch on how we, we help guide and bring people along on this journey. Yeah. 
I think we so I think you're touching there in terms of being having data driven, um, a lot of data driven uh communications and a lot of data driven material to be able now to influence in terms of exactly where it is we are going. Um and, and that's important. I think looking at the data um, and understanding the data really will take us in terms of exactly where we would like to go and, and how we would like to go there. Um, I do have a question from uh, Shelly, uh, and, and who's indicating, well, of course, she would have she missed the beginning of our session. However, she's trying to find out about upgrading. What about upgrading the way that we do business in the public sector um, through facilitating work from home arrangement or even after the pandemic in terms of looking at things like e-signature, um, whether that will be accepted by the ministry and in terms of electronic stamping. Um, I know, Minister, you would have mentioned something to this effect in terms of how we were going in, in your last discourse. So, um, But she's asking that question as well as the digitization of files. And as I look at the question, so it, it, it's interesting because when we talk about digital transformation, we also talk about digitalization, which is two um, separate things. So, Minister, I don't know if you want to give the the, the 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 definition of the both, because there is digitization and there's digital transformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there, there, there are a couple of things, uh, and, and I'm sorry, Shelley, missed the opening because you would have. Should have heard the, 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 the slogan that we have that defines what we're doing for transformation. And the beginning of it says a new way. And when we said a new way, we were talking about everything. Uh, we're approaching things differently. We're thinking digital first and culturally, we're trying to change the way in which we work. Uh, work arrangements have already changed, I believe, permanently. Uh, we'll never go back to the way we were before. Uh, and that, that is not just in terms of work, it's in terms of almost every walk of life. Uh, you look in the education sector, blended learning is now going to be the you norm. Know, you, you talk about, you know, work from home is only one work from home, work from anywhere. We, we started out, we bring your own device, now we're talking about work from anywhere. So, so things like that, are, they're always going to change. Uh, electronic signatures is something that's already been there, and again, it goes back to the previous thing we're talking about changes and adjustments that are required in legislation to ensure that that is universally accepted but then think about it training of the people to do it the, com the comms that says there are lots of people who just do not trust uh electronic items uh, yet these same people will buy things on amazon pay for them and expect that they'll get here but then i would not accept this electronic signature for this thing because it originated in a local place we have to build a level of trust uh, and restore a level of trust by, by creating fit for purpose uh, technology and demonstrating its security and, and safety. Uh, cybersecurity is something that we haven't mentioned yet, but it is absolutely key and at the forefront of what we have. Someone will know this. Anybody gets into the, the type of, of data that we're going to be running now. Cyber, a cyber attack has a different impact on, on a digital government than it does on a paper-based government. But then you can see the same thing, a fire will have the same impact on a paper-based government or, or a rainstorm will have as, as something else. So the, it, it's, it's about different types of risk and managing it in different ways. So yes, that change is, is gone. Uh, three things, digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation. Uh, we've been doing digitization for years. It's basically creating electronic copies of, of things that you have. We, we, if you ever scanned anything, what you have is a digital copy of it. It's, it's that simple. Digitization, however, is all different. It involves the adjustment of processes and so on, so that you're really looking at not just making a copy of something digitally, but using that within the framework of how you're trying to achieve something. When you're talking about it from a transformation perspective, it's even deeper than that. You're affecting the foundation, the way in which things happen. I like to say it doesn't just affect uh, how you do something, it fundamentally affects what you do. And so when the government embarks on a digital transformation, uh, it, you know, way of doing, you know, creating something, you know, what we're talking about is all three of those things have to happen. And that's why it's not simple or easy to do. I don't want to discount the, the impact of, of, of infrastructure. Trinidad and Tobago is a blessed place. Someone will know they have a... a, a, a globally certified data center in which they have their cloud running and so on in which the state partakes in, in, in services from them they are not the only one we have 
Uh, to my knowledge, at least four of them on Highland. And so it makes some of the infrastructure requirements uh, for what we want to do quite a lot simpler to do because we can get a, a lot of the AAS services, infrastructure as a service, application as a service, storage as a service, software as a service, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That list goes on and on. But getting the shift, the mindset, the change, the cultural acceptance of doing things, the idea that I can have something that exists in a cloud and it is still my data and I still have control over it and I can still use it as opposed to if it was downstairs in my little two servers that I have in the room downstairs. And if for some reason electricity goes to the building then all of a sudden I no longer have access to the service. We are building resilient services. And by saying resilient, I mean that you will continue to achieve your mandate if that is to provide a service, regardless of the type of operational stress that you are faced with. COVID-19, if you want to take Trinidad and Tobago as a place that was providing a service, COVID-19 is the greatest amount of operational stress that you could put on a country. It's affected all countries all over. Trinidad and Tobago still exists and continues to work. I'm just putting all that into the pie. So I know it's a global type answer, but I think it, it, it touches all the places that we need to. Wow, thank you, Vanessa. Um, Minister, actually, there's a, a question that I directed to you in the comments um, for the minister from Adana Austin uh, that says, how far along are we with the digitization of services in the public sector? Again, it's an interesting question. Ministries, divisions and agencies are at various levels in their uh, digital transformation maturity. So you have some that are quite progressive and, and you will see them, the Ministry of the General Legal Affairs, uh, the Registrar General's Office, those are going on. Uh, some things that are not part of the government but are going ahead quite nicely as well. The judiciary is a good example. The fact that you have all these remote courts going on, your ability to pay things differently and so on. All of that is happening. Uh, in, in the significant advances going on in the Ministry of Works and Transport, as it relates to what's happening in the licensing division, there are a number of things that they're going to announce fairly recently. Then I state there are things going on in the Ministry of Health and a number of projects that are underway in, in, in the, the areas of focus. So, so we have, I know Ministry of, of Finance has a significant project going on in the business. So there are a number of things that are happening in that space. I think what, what has to happen, and again, this is where the communication comes in. We have to create spaces where it is simpler for uh, the customers to be able to find um you know where all of the the ict based services uh you know how you can access those and use them if i were to ask this audience where would you go to find a list of all of the services that are provided by the government or, or by the state or even by the private sector uh that are ict based and that access remotely you would understand i don't think anybody could answer because it doesn't exist so all of those kinds of things have to happen. So the, the answer is, is, is a bit because the, this digital transformation is a journey. You know, it's something that we have to continuously do and work on. So if, if from ministry to ministry, you may find that they have different levels achieved in their digitization. But their, their digitalization is not at that level yet, depending on which ministry it is. Uh, so, so to give you an overall figure is a bit... Uh, it's something that I can't do. What I can tell you in the areas of focus that we have, and I mentioned them, we have education, we're talking about social development, we're talking about finance, we're talking about healthcare. Uh, those, those, we're going to get uh, really, really, really significant strides uh, in, in the, the very near future in terms of the amount of services that are available for them end to end, not just I can make an appointment or I can access this, but payments, uh, access to the services, delivery of the goods, validation of things, all of that is going to happen. I could list for you the projects that we have, the programs, at least 10 programs, at least 25 projects that are on the way. But again, we can do that at a, time, at, at a place when we have more time. But again, the partnerships that we're talking about, and I, again, I didn't want to discount the infrastructure piece because that is one of the things that, that really, if you look at any transformation that has happened in any country, the underlying infrastructure is something that has to exist if you want it to work. And so we, like I said, we are blessed here in some that we have already, 
Uh, the state is building even more. And of course, we're increasing the access of our customers to those systems. If you build digital systems and people can't get to them, then again, we would have failed in the efforts that we want to do. Okay. So with less than five minutes to go, we have uh, two, possibly three questions within our comments box. Uh, one minister deals with um, from Natasha Brown that looks and is, and is speaking to the vast increase in electronics um, and devices. And so let me just read the question. As she says to the Honorable Minister, with the vast increase in electronical devices, especially over the last year, are there any policy decisions or discussion regarding e-waste and how we can properly dispose of our electronic goods? As well as a taking a question again here from Adana Austin and for Flo, first you, Simone, that asks, can we expect any special tools entrepreneurs, any special tools entrepreneurs can look forward to from Flo, um, specifically those who operate their business online? And I want to see if we can take those two questions within the last couple of minutes that we have. I want to acknowledge um, Shireen Thomas, and I, this Shireen Thomas is viewing us from Grenada. Um, she has also asked a, a lovely question here that says, as a citizen of the Caribbean, how can other islands start such a digital transformation and foster regional integration? So I really want to welcome Shireen to our platform and to our view this afternoon. So um, we tell me the order. Um, uh, Simone, please, uh, Simone, please go first. Sure, Simone. no problem. So I think this is a great question because, again, one of the, the way we look at it, one of the... Um, positive outcomes of COVID is, again, a lot more entrepreneurs. People have been able to quickly pivot and maybe take that jump to start a business that they probably had their minds on. You know, it gave them an opportunity to take a risk in a, during a period where probably they had no other choice. Um, and we recognize that. And we call that our small and medium business enterprise. And what we've been doing, we've actually spent a lot of time um, specifically crafting packages and promotions that think about the small business person. We would have recently concluded our innovation um, month where we talked with, for example, you know, the president of the TTME to let them know, listen, how do we get entrepreneurs? How do we get them online? A lot of them quickly bringing their businesses, you know, full, full steam ahead. And we actually have recently relaunched um, a full suite of small, medium business packages looking at their connectivity needs, both, again, access and hardware, with the added benefit of demand generation. I mean, we are an entertainment uh, content provider. We do have people with a lot of flow boxes there. And a lot of these small businesses need the opportunity to demand, you know, to generate interest in their business. So we said, hey, again, it's that partnership. We'll give you additional advertising as part of your packages to kind of get your, your your company's name out there. So again, it's that holistic approach, thinking about what um, you know small the small businessman needs, right? And understanding that for them, it's probably very much a, a, a formative period that they're going through. That and we want them to succeed because again, that's how we kind of get the economy jump started and back up, you know, to pre-COVID levels, if you will. Um, so that's, you know, if they're interested, absolutely go to our website and, uh, or even reach out to me, um, and we can, we can put you in touch with necessary people. Sure. And I can take a minute just to do the other two. Um, again, it goes back to our slogan from the beginning, when you're talking about e-waste, a new way of we talking end to end, you're not going to design programs and projects and implement them without considering all of the factors associated with it. Again. Previously, uh, environmental issues would have been a bolt on at the end of a process or the end of an implementation. What are we going to do with this after we've done it? Uh, that's not the, the way in which we want to do this. Digital thinking doesn't allow for that. If you are going to build a program that generates significant amount of e-waste, like uh, ICT does, um, and you try to bolt it on at the end, you're going to find that you're going to run into something that you almost can't handle. It is always better to facilitate those things from the beginning so that you understand what the effort and the cost in particular is to be able to manage that. So we, we are well, part of us, our, our, our mandate is that we must be as green as possible. 
So those things are taken into consideration, especially with all the programs we have going forward. On the other one uh, about being a, and I, I saw the, the, the question from Shireen, and, and I, I thank you for tuning in from all the way from, from Grenada. We're talking about the a lot of our international partners uh, and regional partners are very, very, very focused on what we're doing being regional in, in space and international eventually. Uh, and, and that is so because of one of the economies of scale and two, the development associated with it. Many countries can pioneer things that will eventually redound to the success of the region as a whole. Trinidad and Tobago and the Ministry of Digital Transformation, the government of Trinidad and Tobago is wholly uh, in line with that. Uh, you would have seen it in, in, in some of the initiatives that came out of the CARICOM Summit. Uh, we, we were working with, with partners in, in the African diaspora. We're working all over so that we, one, we can take advantage of things that are happening out there. You know, throughout the region, because again, even countries are at various levels in their digital transformation maturity. And so if, if once we continue to have that regional uh, focus in mind, not forgetting, of course, as an as a, as a independent country, we have our own things to do, but working within frameworks that, that transcend your own uh, view of what you have, but things that can work across the region and, and are aligned internationally is something that we definitely focus on and we will continue to look at and partner with other countries to get things done uh, in, in a faster way for, for regional development and growth. Oh, wow. Thank you, Minister. Oh, so this has been a very interesting topic. Um, we do have one gentleman who has just sent in, but we are over our hour. So by this time, I'm going to actually ask you if you want to take it or not. Um, and he's talking about consideration in terms of incentives for small SMEs to digitally transform their business. And this is Scott Field Thomas. Uh, yeah, I can do a quick thing. If, if the, the, the budget presentation, again, uh, by the Minister of Finance, the Honorable Tom Wilbert, would have identified a number of initiatives that was specifically and targeted for small and medium enterprises. And that, that is because there's just so many of them. They represent the lifeblood of the economy and so on. They, they, they themselves need help. And he's put uh, incentives in there in terms of, of tax breaks. He's put incentives in there in terms of grants that they can access. And if they do certain things, uh, there will be relaxation in the repayments. And so on. there are a number of things inherent in what has, has happened there. And if you couple that with the types of relief that would have been also placed in, in the budget that deals with the relaxation on software, hardware, and all of the pieces associated with ICT. There was also uh, the offer of training involved in that in getting things done. If you couple that together, uh, I'm sure there is more than enough uh, within the SME uh, space uh, to get themselves from whatever they, wherever they are within their maturity in terms of use of ICT, uh, use of it in terms of their own business, in terms of their production, or even just in their accounting uh, to make them more in alignment with, with what the industry standards would be. There's more than enough there for that to happen. And I'm sure uh, if they can contact the ministry, uh, they can contact this ministry, they can contact the Ministry of Finance, uh, many places that they can go to where all of that could be made available to it. We'll continue to see if we can build out uh, a, a single space where people can access all of that information. We're working on that. We haven't gotten quite there yet, but the uh, website of the Ministry of Finance is a good place to start if you want to know what is available. Thank, thank you so much, Minister. And thank you, Simone. I think we have come to the end of our little chat. Um, and I really want to thank you guys for being a part of this, for agreeing to come on board with us this afternoon. Uh, digital transformation, it's everybody's business. Um, it is where we are. It is where we, we are going. We are heading into. And I really want to thank you very, very, very much to being a part of Pratt Chat this afternoon. Thank you, Minister Bacchus, and thank you, Simone, very much. My pleasure. Much. Thanks for having us. Minister. Yeah, thanks for all. Yeah. <laughs> Bacchus yeah. Bach will come back. Yes. Yeah, anyway, that's right. Yeah, I think we, we, we will do that. We'll have a, a digital transformation chat part two. Uh, <laughs> and we, uh, where, where we explore some more again. And thank you to the audience. Thank you to Facebook and our audience for listening and for also sending us some comments and getting that discussion going. It has been a fantastic comment. It has been a fantastic discussion, sorry. Um, and we are looking forward again to doing this another time. So yeah. on behalf of the Public Relations Association of Trinidad and Tobago, 
Thank you very much. Uh, and good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. And good evening. Yeah.